Hello everybody, welcome to another video and welcome to the Power Mac G5 Hackintosh build. So in this series of videos, I'm going to take a 12 year old Power Mac G5 and transform it into a quad core Haswell based beast. This project has been months in the planning and I am so excited to finally take you guys on this journey with me. Uh, this is part one and in this part I am just going to go over all of the components that are going to make up this Hackintosh and explain my reasoning on why I bought them. So starting off with the most important part of this project, the G5 itself. Now this was an original dual 1.8 GHz uh, 2003 model uh, Power Mac G5. It came boxed in its original packaging with all of its original documentation. It was absolutely incredible and um, it's been stripped down, ready to go for the case modding, which is coming in part two. And uh, it's, it's my favorite case design of all time, the Power Mac G5. So I am so excited to uh, be able to build a modern, powerful system um, inside this legendary case. In order to allow me to install standard PC ATX components into this pr completely proprietary case, I'm gonna be using uh, the micro ATX motherboard tray and uh, re rear panel from the laser hive. Now this kit makes everything so, so much easier. In theory, I could have not bothered with this kit at all. I could have epoxied my own standoffs onto the case and then used extension cables for the IO. But IO that was standardized back in 2003 when this machine originally came out is nowhere to be seen on, on modern motherboards anymore. So in order to keep this, this computer 100% accessible from the rear and practical as a modern computer. Um, I think sacrificing that little little bit of stock G5 look is uh, definitely worth it for the practicality. Turning our attentions to the insides and this is what our G5 is gonna look like. I'm gonna be reusing the original um, PCI middle divider shelf along with the original fan assemblies and the original uh, G5 heatsink cover. A lot of G5 mods that I've seen look very, very barren and very messy um, internally. A lot of a lot of these mods have micro ATX case uh, motherboards just crammed in the corner, and then the rest of the case is just filled up with either nothing or cables. Um, reusing the G5's original airflow design and the original structure, it allows me to. Again, keep the, keep the G5 looking as stock as possible. And it also allows me to, to keep the build nice and tidy and uh, tuck cables out of the way. I'm also going to be um, reusing the G5's original power supply housing. Um, I'm gonna be cutting down uh, Corsair CX500M power supply um, and then mounting it in the original uh, power supply casing. Wiring up the, the original power socket again and it just gives me, again, that extra level of authenticity and options uh, when it comes to cable management. So that is the G5 itself. Now turning our attention to the more traditional components, starting off with the CPU. Now I have gone with an Intel Core i5-4570S. This is a monster of a CPU. Um, it's a quad-core Haswell chip running at 2.9 gigahertz with uh, turbo boost up to 3.6 gigahertz, I believe. And um, yeah, it is so, so much faster than anything I've ever owned before. And um, this thing is just gonna be with me for years to come. As the 4570S is a very low TDP and very heat efficient processor, it allows me to get a little bit creative with the way I cool it. Enter the Zalman FX70 passive cooler. Now, Zalman claim that this cooler can sufficiently cool any processor with TDP up to 95 watts. So our CPU, plenty of breathing room there. Call me weird though, but instead of just using this passive cooler, I'm gonna be using this cooler alongside four fans. Now, before you attack me in the comment section, I'm gonna be using four of these Arctic F9 fans um, in the original fan assemblies, uh, the 92mm fans in the original fan assemblies in the G5, they're going to be set up in a push-pull configuration and they are going to create this ice-cold pocket of air 
flowing across the RAM, the motherboards, and the CPU. They're going to be running at 5 volts, and at 5 volts, they are inaudible, so the computer will be completely silent still, and um, I am expecting some seriously, seriously awesome uh, temperatures. Uh, having a massive passive cooler flanked by four fans, it's just going to be so awesome. Aside from the four main fans, I'm going to be running one Arctic F8, so the, the F9's little brother, um, up on the PCI divider shelf, um, just to sort of help airflow over the PCI section. And then I'm also going to be running two Gelid Silent 6 fans um, in the power supply casing to uh, the cool, the, the, the CX500. The motherboard I'll be using is the Gigabyte H81M DS2V. Now this is a completely bare bones basic micro ATX motherboard, but it's all I need. Uh, it's based on the same H81 chipset as um, my current Hackintosh, so I know exactly what needs installing and what, what goes wrong and how to fix it. And um, it's reliable. Gigabyte always make reliable boards. I have complete confidence in, in the brand. So um, yeah, I may consider getting a H H97 or a Z97 somewhere down the line. But for now, it holds my CPU, my RAM, and the graphics card. Um, it's all I need. On to RAM, I'm going to be running two 4 gig sticks of uh, Micron DDR3 1333MHz. Uh, 8 gig is perfectly adequate for what I use my computer for, and um, it'll be running in dual channels, so pretty simple stuff. Um, yeah, all good. Graphics. I'm going to be using the same GTX 660 that I'm currently using in my current rig. Um, I love this thing to pieces. It runs very cool, it, it, it performs incredibly well, and it's still got a lot more to give. The Core i5, uh, sorry, the Core i3 that I'm running in my current system now is a pretty significant bottleneck for um, the 660. So pairing it up with this Core i5 is uh, finally gonna give it some proper breathing room. In terms of storage, I'm gonna be using three drives in total. Um, as my OS X boot drive, I'm going to be using a 128 gig um, Toshiba SSD. Again, it's the same SSD as I'm using in my current system at the moment, except I'm going to be running it inside a 2.5 inch um, enclosure, and I'm going to be finally able to run it a full whack on a, a SATA 3 bus. And then for OS X storage and uh, Windows, I'm going to be uh, using two uh, 500 gig Seagate Pipeline HD2 drives. They're quiet, they're reliable, they're pretty speedy, and um, again, for, for what I use it for, absolutely perfect. So, aside from the boring stuff like SATA cables and Wi-Fi adapters, that's pretty much it. Um, that is how what you are going to see in the next four parts is going to be possible. Uh, be sure to, to drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed this first part, and be sure to check out the playlist uh, linked in the description below. Um, but yeah, as always guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.